So this is going to be finally the end of section 8.1. And these problems get to be a little bit monstrous. We're going to do something similar to the last group of problems in that we're going to use the elimination method to solve, uh, get a solution to a system of equations. Unfortunately, the equations now are kicked up a notch and they have three letters and three unknowns. And when you have three letters and three unknowns, um, if you were to graph this, if this was a, a y equals or an f of x, f of x, y, z equals, um, the graph would be essentially a, a sheet of paper. And I'll show you in a second what the graphs look like, but it's almost more complicated thinking about the graphs than the algebra is. But we're going to solve a system of equations. It's going to be potential that we get a a system of equations that has no solutions and a system of equation has no solution exactly for the it'll look the same algebraically you get no solutions are inconsistent if all the letters drop out and a false statement is left like 0 equal to 5 or 2 equal to 8. So when we're solving systems of equations, we can get one solution, we can get no solution, or we can get infinitely many solutions. Actually, when we're solving system of linear equations, I guess that would be probably more appropriate. Um, so we can get no solutions. Another thing we can have, we can get infinitely many solutions. If the system has infinitely many solutions, we're just going to say it has infinitely many solutions. There's a, a nice way to write, um, an elegant way to write a solution when a system has infinitely many solutions. And I used to teach it. Actually, last set of videos I taught it. I just never tested on it, and it's not that important. Like a, for the last group of infinite solutions, you wouldn't see these infinite solution problems again until linear algebra and most of you won't take that, and it's got to be a couple years away, even if you're going to take it. And I can tell a problem has infinitely many solutions if the letters drop out and a true statement remains. It's exactly the same in terms of interpreting um, the answer. So it's a true statement remains. And then if the letters don't drop out, we have one solution. Visually, if I'm going to solve problem 37 and I want to visually interpret this uh, system of equations, each of the equations graphs into a plane or a sheet of paper. And for those of you that are visual, it could happen that the graphs of the three sheets of paper or three planes are parallel. And if the graphs of the three planes are parallel, that would be an inconsistent system of equations. You'd have no solution. It could happen that each of the three planes intersects in a line. And if that would happen, you'd have infinitely many solutions. It could happen that two of the planes are parallel and the other plane crosses the two. Since the two parallel planes don't cross, that would be a no solution. It could happen that they, the planes don't meet all in one line or all in one point, and that also would be a no solution. The three planes have to meet in the same place to get um, at least a solution. And this last one, these three planes are supposed to be in meeting right at that point, and that's one solution. Most of the problems that we're going to do are going to have one solution. And it's actually the, the problems that have infinitely many solutions or no solutions are actually easier. You'd rather have those because immediately if all the letters drop out, you look at what's left, and you, if it's a false statement that's left, you say that's inconsistent or no solution. If all the letters drop out and you're left with a true statement, you're going to say they um, are infinitely many solutions. So 
can't fit these problems on, well, I could fit two problems on one page, but the work is so um, lengthy that I couldn't put the problem on a page and do the work. So let me explain the process to you and then um, do the work for my, my problem. Essentially, you're going to need to do the elimination method three times to get the answer. In the next section, there's going to be some problems that we're going to need to do the elimination method six times to get an answer, which are really absurd. So I typed up a general solution strategy and my first step in my solution is to pick an equation and pair it with the other two. This creates two pairs of equations. And this for me is a, a newish way to explain the first step. New being maybe I learned it eight years ago and I learned it when I was tutoring an eighth grader. It's just how she saw the problems and I liked it so much better than what I was saying before that I can't even remember what I was saying before. So you may have seen these problems before. and. For um, most of our problems, at least the first few problems, I help you out with the first step. So I suggest on problem 37 for your first step to pair the middle equation with the other two and drop out the y. So I'm going to pick an equation and pair it with the other two and then pick a letter to drop out. This don't pick a z has to do with if a problem has infinitely many solutions, you want to write the solution in a nice way. If you drop out the z's, you make more work for yourself. I'll just be consistent. I won't ever drop out the z's. And I'm, so I'm going to pick equation, pair with the other two, pick a letter to drop, and I'll drop the same letter from each pair. I'm going to start with that on problem 38. And these really are, are can be condensed to one step. All right, so for problem 38, I'm going to use my hint. I'm going to pair the middle equation with the other two for my first step. The letter I'm going to pick out is going to be the y. So first step, I'm going to take the middle equation and pair it with the other two. And the, there wasn't a good or bad equation to pick. When I'm picking an equation and picking a letter to drop out, I look at the coefficients of the letters. I like to pick an equation that the letters have different signs because when you're using the elimination method, you need both a positive and a negative in front of a letter. And in the middle equation, uh, it had a positive in front of the z's. In the opposite equations, you had minuses in front of the z's. That's kind of a good thing. And similarly, um, I also want the numbers in front of the letters to be multiples of each other. And it turns out that if I would have paired the middle equation with the other two and dropped out the x's, I would have been in an equally good of a place because the x in the middle equation has a minus in front of it, and the other two it has positives in front of it, so I have the negative positive thing going on. And the coefficients of one and three are multiples of each other. There isn't a right or wrong way to start, but it can happen that if you pick a, um, a way, you can make more work for yourself if you aren't clever on how you get started. And when we do the test of, for these kinds of problems, I tell you how I want you to start uh, as much as anything because it makes it easy for me to grade. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm taking the middle equation and pairing it with the bottom equation. And I'm taking the middle equation and pairing it with the top equation. And it doesn't matter which side I write the middle equation, I mean the top and the bottom equation on when I pair it with the middle equation. And I was nice to myself. I wrote down the solution ahead of time because checking these is kind of monstrous. So this is my first step. I paired, in, I paired the middle equation with the other two. This is the middle equation with the bottom, middle equation with the top. Now I'm going to drop out the y's. To drop out the y's, I need to have the y's have the same number with different signs in front of them. In this first pairing, the y's won't drop out because the y's, although they have different signs in front of the numbers, they don't have the same um, number. So I'm going to make the bottom equation here have 
have a minus 2y to force the y's to drop out. And I'm going to do that by multiplying the entire bottom equation by 2. I'm going to leave the top equation kind of how it was written. I might make a 1 in front of that x to emphasize that there's actually a 1 with that negative sign. But other than introducing that 1 in place of the negative sign, I'm leaving the bottom equation intact, top equation intact. Now I'm going to go 2 times x and get 2x, 2 times negative 1y, 2 times minus 4z, and 2 times 14. So I'm actually in the middle of my third step. First step, I picked the middle equation, paired it with the other two. Second, I picked the letter y to drop out. Third, take the two equations, um, whoops, drop, no, I'm still in step two, drop the same letter from each pair. This will create two equations with two unknowns. This, I'm in the process of doing this. I'm, I need to be clear with the steps because I don't, um, I just do these problems. In my mind, I don't have steps like this, but it's good for students to see the steps. So now I'm going to add these equations together. Negative 1x plus 2x is positive 1x. These y's cancel. 2z minus 8z is minus 6z. And negative 11 plus 28 is positive 17. The other set of equations where I paired the middle with the top, those that you can just add together and drop out the y's. So you're going to go negative 1x plus 3x is positive 2x. 2z plus 1z is positive 3z. And negative 11 plus 15 is 4. So I need to do the elimination method um, three times. I've done it two times. I'm done with the second step. So I picked an equation, middle, paired it with the other two, picked a letter to drop out, and I actually dropped that letter from each pair. Now I'm on to step three. Take the two equations created in step two and use the elimination method to solve, to solve them. This will give answers for two of the three letters. I'll just have one more letter to do and one more step after this. So this is all my steps one, two, and three. And let me just pull out another sheet of paper. I'm going to take the two equations that I just created, x minus 6z equal to 17, along with 2x plus 3z equal to 4, and I'm going to do my third elimination method. And for this elimination method, I like to get rid of the z's because they have opposite signs in front of the letters. And I'm going to get rid of the z's by making the z's have a positive and a negative 6z. The top has a negative 6z. I'm going to make the bottom have a positive 6z by multiplying it by 2. So in my efforts to finish up this third step, I took the two equations that I generated on the last step. And now I'm going to stack those. And this is going to give me the ability to get answers for x and for z. So I multiply the bottom equation by 2 to force the z's to cancel. Now I'm going to add these equations together. The top is 1x plus 4x, in which I get a 5x. The z's cancel, and then 17 plus 8 is 25. Now I'm going to divide by 5, and I'm going to get one of my three answers. Part of my answer is going to have x equal to 5. From this system of equations, I could ignore everything up here and hunt out an answer for z. I could use this equation or this equation to solve for z. I'm going to use this equation to solve for z because the z has a positive in front of it. So now I'm going to solve for z. So on this step, I can get two of the three letters. Solving for z, I'm going to use that equation 2x plus 3z equal to 4, and I'm going to change the x to 5. I will go 2 times 5 plus 3z equals to 4. This is 10 plus 3z equals to 4, and then minus 10 minus 10. This gives me 3z equal to minus 6, and then divide by 3, divide by 3, 
that gives me the second answer that I need, z equal to negative 2. My answer up here, you see x equal to 5. You see z equal to negative 2. I'm done with the third step. First step, picked, in a, picked the middle equation, paired it with the other two. Second step, I dropped out the y's from both equations, got two equations that just had the letters x and z, moved on to step 3, and in step 3, Three, I took the two equations, solved them using the elimination method. This gave me answers for two of the three letters, in this case, x and z. Step four is the last thing I need to do. I need to substitute the answers from this last step into any one of the original equations and solve for the other letter. The other letter I'm solving for is y. And when I'm going to pick an equation to solve for y, I don't like negatives in front of my letters. I'm going to pick this highlighted equation and plug the answer in for x and z to solve for y. I could pick any one of the three original equations and plug my answers in. They all will give the same answer for y, but again, I don't work well with negatives. So last step, I'm going to use the equation and I'm going to solve. I'm going to use the middle equation. I'm going to solve for y. I'm going to use the equation negative, I'm going to say negative x plus 2y plus 2z equals negative 11. And for x, I'm going to plug 5, so I'm going to go negative and then 5 plus 2y plus 2 times negative 2 for z equals to negative 11. This gives me minus 5 plus 2y minus 4 equals minus 11. This gives me 2y minus 9 equals minus 11 because the 4 and the 5 have the same sign, so you add them and keep them negative. Then I'm going to add 9 to both sides. That's going to give me 2y equals minus 2. On this side, the numbers have opposite signs, so you subtract them. And then I divide by 2, divide by 2, and I'll get y equal to negative 1 which goes in my answer, just where I put it in the y position. So I'm going to write my answer as an ordered triple, just like we did the first few problems. So that was a monstrous a lot of work right here. It took me a full page and a half to do it. So save yourself a, a lot of space to do these and see what you can do with um, problem 37. Your first step, I made the same as my first step, specifically pairing the middle equation with the other two and dropping out the y's. So I'm going to move on to do, um, hmm. Oh, let me tell you the answer to your problem. In, in, in a bit, I'll show you how to get the answer to your problem, but it's a little early. Maybe we'll get like three of these in, and then I'll show you um, how you can, another way to get your answer. Because checking is plugging the number, each of the numbers into all three equations. And checking is very tedious, and there's a, a slick way to check. It takes a second to learn, but it's something you're going to need to learn anyways. For your equation, I believe, I'm going to check this, it's going to be x equal to 7, y equal to negative 3, z equal to 4. Let me double check the work I did off screen here. Again, it's a little too quick to show you the slick thing I did on my calculator. Um, yeah, it feels good. When I look at the next page, I've got a problem for you and a problem for me. And I need to um, start from scratch. For you, I suggested to pair the middle equation with the other two and drop out the x's. Again, because the x in the middle equation has a minus sign, and in the other equations it has plus signs. That's good to pick a letter in an equation that has opposite signs, it makes it so you have the negative positive thing working, and the numbers in front of the x's are all multiples of each other. For mine, I said start any way you like. I'm going to pair the bottom equation with the other two and drop out the x's for the same reason. I have different numbers, uh, different signs from the bottom to the top. So my first step, I'm going to pair the bottom with the other two and drop out the x's. 
you're going to pair the middle with the other two and drop out the x's. And it's going to be real similar. Real quickly, I'll get an answer for your equation. Of course, you could always just look at my answers. I think your answer is going to be x equal 1, y equal to 2, z equal to 3, 2, 4, it works there, negative 1, 1 works there, 1, 4, work, that is the answer. My answer is 1, 0, 3. I'm going to give myself lots of room to do this, so I'm going to fill your problem off the screen here. And do my first step just in case you need to see more of these. So I'll pair my bottom equation with the other two. My bottom equation is x plus 7y plus 2z equals to negative 5. And I'm going to pair it with the top equation, minus 5x minus y plus 3z equals to minus 14. And I'm going to pair that same bottom equation, x plus 7y plus 2z equals to negative 5 with the middle equation, negative 2x plus 2y minus 6z equal to 16. Eventually I need to do the elimination method three times. Here's the first two times. I need to drop out the x's because I decided to drop out the x's. And in the top one, I'm going to make a 5x with a negative 5x in the left side here to make my x's cancel out. And in the right one, I'm going to make a 2x and a negative 2x for the x's to cancel out. So I want the same numbers with different signs. The x's have on the top have positive ones. I can turn that positive one into something that will cancel with the 5 and the 2 real easily. So multiplying everything in the top equation by 2 on this left side, will give me 5x plus 35y plus 10z equals to negative 25. And for this, I'll leave the bottom negative 5x minus, I'll say minus 1y plus 3z equals to negative 14. That sets these up so I can add them and drop out the x's. X is drop, 35y minus 1y is 34y. 10z plus 3z is 13z. And minus 25 and minus 14 is minus 39. Really unfortunate numbers, but I just all deal with them. Next set, multiply everything in the top equation by 2 and get 2x plus 14y plus 4z equals to minus 10 and then negative 2x plus 2y minus 6z equals to 16. So this is a step three. This is actually still the step two. So I picked, an, step one was picking the equation, pairing it with the other two. Step two is dropping out that letter, picking a letter to drop out and dropping it out. I'm dropping out the x's. And here I'm gonna get 16y minus 2z equals to 6. The numbers are horribly large and I do have some flexibility. If any of the equations, all of the numbers are divisible by the same number, you can divide them by that number before you move on. And I'm going to use that little trick to make this a little bit easier. So the work that I did in this right set of equations, each of the coefficients was even. I'm going to divide all those by 2. And that's going to make my next step easier. Keeps the numbers smaller and actually makes the next step easier. Now I'm done with step two. Step two, I pick the x's, I drop them out, and now I create two equations with two unknowns. Step three, take the equations created in the last step and solve them using the elimination method. So the next thing I need to do is take these equations, 34y plus 13z, equals negative 39 and pair it with 8y minus 1z equals to 3. I'm going to drop out the z specifically because they have a positive negative thing going on. It's easy to make a, a 1 into a 13. I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by 13 
to make that Z canceling possible. So I'm using the elimination method. This is the third of three times that I need to use the elimination method. I need to do 13 times 8, which I don't know. Off screen I did it 100 and got 104. And then 13 times minus 1. And then 13 times 3. Now when I add the equations together, I get 138y equals 0, because those 39s are the same number with opposite signs. Now I'm going to divide. This is not a no solution because the y didn't drop out, just the number dropped out. You need the letter to drop out to get a no solution. I'm going to divide, and any fraction with 0 in the numerator is equal to 0. So that's part of my answer, and I, that's right because in my answer I see the 0. Now I'm going to move on and solve for z, and I'm going to use this equation to solve for z because it has a nice positive z. as opposed to a negative z. So using this equation, I'm going to go 34, and then for y, I'm going to plug 0, plus 13z equals negative 39. This is going to give me, that'll cancel. I'll get 13z equals minus 39, and then divide by 13, divide by 13, and I'll get z equals minus 3. Done with the second step. I took the two equations created and used the elimination method, got answers for two of the three variables. Now I need to take those two numbers and plug them into any one of the three original equations. I like to use one that has a positive x. So when I go to do my last step, I'm going to use the very bottom equation right here. So my last step for number 40 I'm going to use this equation, x plus 7y plus 2z equal to minus 5. And my algebra produced y equal to 0, z equal to minus 3. I'm going to shove those into that, but, that equation. But I could have used the other equations. I just didn't like them because of the negative x's. This is going to give me x plus 7 times 0 plus 2 times negative 3 equals negative 5. This will give me x minus 6 equals negative 5 because the 7 times 0 is 0. And then I'll add 6 to both sides and get the last portion of my answer of x equal to 1. Notice when I wrote the answer ahead of time to save myself some work, I have x equal to 1, y equal to 0, z equal to negative 3 written as an ordered triple. So 39 is, is your torture to go through right now. It's exactly the same idea. Pair the middle equation with the other two. Drop out the x's because the x in the middle equation has a negative and the other two it has positive. So we have the sign differential going on for us. Um, let me do 41 just to save you some, some work. So look, at I said start any way you like. So I look for a number a letter that has different signs and I could pair the top equation with the other two to drop out the z's that would make sense but I said not to drop out the z's so I won't compare the middle equation with the other two to drop out the y's or I can pair the bottom equation with the other two to drop out the x's so I'm not going to do 42 I'm going to do 41 and my first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pair the bottom with the other two and drop out the x's. So I have to do the elimination method three times to get to my answer. And bottom with the other two is a nice way to start. So I'm going to go negative x plus y plus 5z equals to 24, which is the bottom equation. Pair it with the top. You have to be really comfortable with the elimination method to do these problems because you're doing the elimination method three times. You have to be super careful when you're doing your multiplying and writing the problems down wrong. So often I'll write the problem down wrong and I'll write one number down wrong. If you write one number down wrong, the whole thing is wrong, which is horrible. So from this pair, I'm going to drop out the x's. And from this pair, I'm going to 
drop out the well that hardly did anything there I paired the bottom with idiot I paired the bottom with the top twice because I like that so much I also need to pair the bottom with the middle I just neglected to do that because for whatever reason I didn't want to do that so what I had written was the same thing down twice telling you you have to be careful and then here I'm about to do it again so you really have to stay hyper focused when you do these if you don't you're going to do something like I did and it's going to cause you just miser misery so in this first step to drop out the x's the x had a really a one negative one in front of it I'm going to multiply that top equation by 2 I'm going to go 2 times negative 1x and get negative 2x, 2 times y, and get plus 2y, 2 times 5z, and get plus 10z, 2 times 24, and get equal 48. Leave the bottom one, 2x plus 2y minus 1z equals to 2. Now I'm going to add the equations together and get 4y plus 9z equal to 50. Big numbers, bad numbers, there's no number I could divide away. The other set of equations is so much nicer because it's ready for the x's to drop out. These x's have a negative 1 and positive 1 as coefficients. You can just add them to drop them out. So I'll add those. 1y minus 3y, when I add those I get a minus 2y. 5z and 1z, when I add those I get a 6z. And 24 minus 28 I get a minus 4. I might as well divide all these by 2 because I can. Usually this is a smart thing to do. It makes the number smaller and easier to handle. So give me negative 1y plus 3z equals negative 2. Done with the second step. First step, I pick the bottom equation, paired it with the other two. Second step, I pick the x's to drop out and I dropped them out. Now I'm going to take the two equations created in step 2 and solve them by the elimination method. So now I'm going to take this 4y plus 9z equal to 50 and the negative 1y plus 3z equals negative 2 and I'm going to drop out the y's because they have opposite signs and make some good candidates to drop out. To drop those out I'm going to make the bottom have a 4y, to, negative 4y to cancel with the top. So let me just go sideways because I'm running out of room here. I'm going to leave the top 4y plus 9z equal to 50. And for the bottom, I'll go 4 times negative 1y is negative 4y. 4 times 3z is 12z. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. I'm going to add these together. 4y minus 4y cancels. 9z and 12z is going to give me 21z. 50 minus 8 is going to give me 42. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 21. And that's going to give me one of the three answers. Now I'm going to solve for y. And I'm going to use this equation to solve for y because it has a positive in front of the y. I just mess up so often when I use negatives. So going to solve for y. I'm gonna, you could use the equation beneath that. I just don't like messing with negatives. And how I'm going to solve for y is I'm going to plug 2 in for z because I just figured out that z equals to 2. So when I do that, that's going to give me 4y plus 18 equals to 50. I'm going to minus 18 from both sides. That's going to give me 4y equals to 32. And then divide by 4, divide by 4, and get y equal to 8. So I have z equal to 2, y equal to 8. That's the end of the third step. I took the two equations, created in step 2, solved them for two of the three letters. Now I need to substitute the answers that I just got into any one of the original equations. I'm trying to solve for x. I want a nice positive x. I like that equation up there to solve for x. So the last thing I need to do is pick any one of the three original equations. 
and they all will give the same answer just with varying difficulties of algebra. That middle equation to solve for x has a nice lovely just x, it's the best equation to use. The other equations will work, but not as nicely. So I'm going to plug in, did I get 8 for, did I get 8 for y? Yes I did. So plug in 8 for y and 2 for z. So this is going to give me x minus 24 plus 2 equals negative 28. These combine to be minus 22. And now I'm going to add 22 to both sides. This x, I should say x minus 22 equals negative 28. And I'm going to add 22 to both sides. I'm going to get x equal to minus 6. So my answer for your problem 41 is going to be x equal to negative 6, y equal to 8, z equal to 2. Now I'm going to show you how to check and you're not going to like it at first but it's something that we're going to need in the next section and it's something that once you learn it on your calculator you're, it's not horrible. It's just hard to learn at first. All right, so how do I check this without, well, one way to check it is just to plug the numbers in. So maybe I won't teach you this yet because it's just not the right time. So if I wanted to check, we'll learn a better way to check, but the first equation was 2x plus 2y minus z equal to 2. To check if negative 6, 8, 2 is a solution, I'd go 2 times negative 6 plus 2 times 8 minus 2 and see if that equals to 2 in the first equation. I would do that on my calculator. I'd go 2 times negative 6 plus 2 times 8 minus 2. That gives me 2 equal to 2, so it checks in the top equation. Then I can move down to the bottom equation, middle equation, x minus 3y plus z equals to minus 28 and go is negative 6 minus 3 times 8 plus 2 equal to minus 28. That's just taking those three numbers, plugging them in for the letters. And that would ask me to go negative 6 minus 3 times 8 plus 2. And that gives me minus 28 equals to minus 28. It checks there. And then for the bottom equation, it's negative x plus y plus 5z equal to 24. I'm going to go negative, negative 6, putting negative 6 in for x, plus 8 plus 5 times 2 equal to 24 on my calculator. So negative, negative 6 plus 8 plus 5 times 2 gives me 24 equals to 24. That is a, the guaranteed way to check. Just take your answer and plug it into each equation. And each equation has to ring out true. You can't have one equation not work. If, it works, if your solution works in all three equations, then it's a solution to the system. So I'm going to skip 42. Could be a hiccup in the video because I made another mistake and I just cut it out. Um, when you go to do your problem 30, 43, um, I, in the beginning I said never drop out the z's. It turns out that's far and away the easiest way to start your problem because um, the x's all have the same signs. I probably wouldn't want to drop out the x's. The y's in the top and the bottom equation have a different sign than the y in the middle, so they're candidates to drop. But the y's in the bottom, the, between the bottom and the t middle equation, they don't drop so easily. The z in the middle equation has different signs from the z's in the top and the bottom equation, and the z's are easier to drop out. For your first couple steps, I'd probably pair the middle with the other two and drop out the z's. And 
I believe the answer you get is x equal to 1, y equal to 0, z equal to 2. Yeah, I think that's right. All right, so I'm going to do 44. And you've got to be getting tired of me doing these. Um, it kind of is what it is. So let me, oh, this is a no solution. So no solutions are wonderful because the algebra is way less. How I'm going to tell there's no solution is the letters are going to drop out and I'm going to have a false statement. So I'm going to pair the middle equation with the other two and drop out the z's. Even though I said not to drop out the z's, I'm going to do it, just like you did it for your last problem. So middle equation, negative x plus 2y plus z equal to 5. Pair it with the top equation. Pair it with the bottom equation. So I'm going to write that middle equation down twice. Pair it with the top, 2x minus 3y minus z equal to 0. Pair it with the bottom, 3x minus 4y minus z equal to 1. I'm going to drop out the z's. The reason I pick the z's, they're so lovely to drop out. The z's in both of these are going to drop out without any extra fiddling. So I'm going to drop out the z's. And remember that that negative x really means negative 1x. I'm going to add the these two equations together. The z's will drop out. I'll get positive 1x minus 1y equals 5. And for the second pair, the z's are going to cancel out. Negative 1x plus 3x is 2x. 2y minus 4y is minus 2y. 5 plus 1 is 6. Might as well divide all these by 2 because it's going to make my work a lot easier. This is going to give me x minus y equal to 3, or x minus 1y equal to 3. This, that's done with my second step. My first step is I paired the middle equation with the other two. My second step, I pick the letter z to drop out, even though I said don't, just but I'm doing it anyways. I'm violating my prime directive here. And I p made two equations with two unknowns. And then I actually finished step three, two. I solved those two. Well, I haven't solved those two. Now I'm on the step three. Step three is to pair these equations together. and solve them. I'm going to drop out the y's by making the top and the bottom equation have a minus and a positive 1y. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by minus 1. i will get me a minus 1x, a plus 1y equals a minus 5. And I'm going to leave it on top of the bottom equation, which is 1x minus 1y equal to 3. When I add these equations together, the x's and the y's cancel. All the letters cancel, which means either I have infinitely many solutions or I have no solutions. On the right-hand side, I get negative 2. If all the letters drop out and you get a false statement, you're done with your algebra. You just write no solution. If all the letters drop out and you're left with a true statement, you're done with your algebra, and you say there's infinitely many solutions. Here, I could say no solution or inconsistent for my answer. So once the letters drop out, I'm happy because there's no more work to do. I can, for this one, I can say this is inconsistent. Or I can write no solution. I have instinctively always write no solution. The text that we use on campus likes to write um, inconsistent, they mean the same thing. All right, so your problem 45, because my problem 44 had no solution, I would bet a, a lot of money that your problem 45 will have no solution. My problem 46 has no solution, so I'll do your 45, and I won't do my problem 46, and we'll see what happens there. And let me see what I can do with this. Pair the bottom equation with the other two and drop out the x's, so let me do that. On the test that you're going to get over this material, I'm going to tell you what I want you to do in terms of which equation to pair with the other two and which letter to drop out. As much as anything, it makes your work easy, but really it makes my grading a lot easier. If you pick a different first step than I pick, 
it makes my grading just a nightmare if you make a mistake. If you don't make a mistake, the grading's not hard ever. So I took the bottom equation and I put it with the top equation and then I'm going to put it with the middle equation. And I decided to drop out the x's. Well, these x's from this pair, they're ready to drop out. So I'm just going to add those two lines together. 3y minus 2y is positive 1y. Negative 7z plus 3z is minus 4z. 1 plus 6 is 7. On this pair, the y's aren't ready, to, the x's aren't ready to drop out because they don't have the same number with opposite signs. I'm going to make the top equation have a negative 4x by multiplying through by 2. And I'm going to get negative 4x plus 6y minus 14z equals to 2. I'm going to leave that on top of the bottom equation that I doesn't, don't need to change. I'm going to add these together. The x's are going to cancel. 6y minus 3y is 3y. Negative 14z plus 2z is negative 12z. 2 plus 0 is 2. There's really nothing to divide by for either of these. So now I'm going to stack the equation. 1y minus 4z equal to 7 on top of 3y minus 12z. 12z equals to 2. I want to drop out a letter. Um, it turns out it doesn't matter which letter you pick, they're both going to drop out. I'm going to drop out the y's. I'm going to make this equation have a minus 3y to cancel out with that positive 3y. So I'm going to go through and go negative 3 times 1y is negative 3y. Negative 3 times negative 4z is positive 12z. Negative 3 times 7 is negative 21. I'm going to write that on top of the 3y minus 12z equals to 2. When I add the left side together, both letters drop out because they have the same number, opposite signs. The left side, I get negative 19. When all the letters drop out, you're done doing algebra. If the statement is false, you say no solution or inconsistent. If the statement is true, you say infinitely many solution. So my answer for problem 45 is going to be either no solution, which is what I instinctively write, or you can say it's inconsistent. My guess is the rest of your problems and the rest of my problems will have infinitely many solutions. If you look at my solutions manual, I show you how to write the solution in a really elegant way that you're not responsible for. Once the, all the letters drop out and you're left with a true statement, you can stop and just say there's infinitely many solutions. My guess is that will happen for problem 47. And it's going to happen probably for my problem 48. So let me get going on 48 while you do 47. Pair the bottom equation with the other two and drop out the z's. I'm going to work on my problem 48. Pair the top equation with the other two and drop out the z's. Even though I say not to drop out the z's, I'm violating my order. So step one in this, I'm going to pair the top equation with the other two. I wrote a one in front of that z because I think it's going to make it easier for me. So pair the top equation with the middle equation. Pair the top equation with the bottom equation. Now I'm going to drop out the z's. The z's are going to be easy to drop out. That's why I picked them to drop out. Specifically, to drop out the z's and this set here, I'm going to get the top equation to have a minus 2z by multiplying through by 2. I'll get 4x minus 6y minus 2z equal to 0. Leave that on top of the 3x plus 2y plus 2z equals to 2. Now I'll add these together. 4x plus 3x is 7x. Negative 6y plus 2y is minus 4y. The z's cancel. 0 plus 2 is 2. Other equations, I'm going to multiply the top by 3 and get 3 times 2x is 6x. 3 times minus 3y is minus 9y. 3 times minus 1z is minus 3z. 3 times 0 is equal to 0. 
write that on top of the 1x plus, this should be y there obviously, not z, 1x plus 5y plus 3z equals to 2. This is going to give me 7x minus 4y, z's cancel, equal to 2. These are exactly the same. I know there's going to be infinitely many solutions. Let me stack these on top of each other. So 7x minus 4y equal to 2 stacked on 7x minus 4y equal to 2. I'm going to make the uh, both letters drop out by multiplying the top equation by minus 1 and adding it to the bottom. So I'm going to go negative 7x plus 4y equal to minus 2 because negative 1 times 7x is negative 7x. Negative 1 times negative y is positive 4y. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. And I'm going to leave that on top of the bottom equation. And this is going to give me 0 equal to 0. When the letters drop out and you're left with a true statement, you can just say there's infinitely many solutions. So my answer, without any more work, is there's infinitely many solutions. There's a really elegant way to write the solutions kind of like I did in the very first infinitely many solution problems in part one. But I, I'm not going to hold you responsible for it. If you looked at my solutions manual, you'll see the way to write the solutions, but you're not responsible for that. If you want to learn it, um, come visit me. I'll show you how to do it. All right. My guess is your problem 49 has infinitely many solutions. My problem 50 has infinitely many solutions. I'll skip 50 and I'll do your 51 just to save you some work. So 49, I would guess it has infinitely many solutions. Let me do your 51 just to get that last little bit of work done for you. I'm going to pair the middle equation with the other two and drop out the, let me drop out the x's. They look so easy to drop out. So pair the middle with the other two. Drop out the x's. I'm going to go negative x minus 3y plus z equal to 23. Pair it with the top equation, x plus 2y minus z equals to 8. And take that middle equation, negative x minus 3y plus z equal to 23, and pair it with the bottom equation, x plus y plus 5z equal to 39. First pairing, the letters are going to drop out. And oh, the reason I said z's is because I, the trick that was going to happen. I don't think this is infinitely many solutions. Oh, well, let's see. This is a trick that I was hinting about earlier that I might have taken out of my video. So let me do this. When I pair the top equation, the middle equation with the top equation, both the x's and the z's cancel. And I'm left with negative 1z equals to 31. That's not a bad thing, but it's a surprising thing. When I do the other pairing and add these together, I get negative 3y plus 1y is negative 2y. 1z plus 5z is 6z. 23 plus 39 is 62 getting tired. I make mistakes when I get tired. I'm going to divide all these by 2. Gosh, that's 62, not 6z. This is going to give me negative 1y plus 3z equals to 31. Interesting, interesting, interesting that um, that this one right here um, both letters dropped out, that's actually a good thing. Um, so now I'm going to take this system of equations, um, negative 1y equal to 31, and negative 1y plus 3z equals to 31, and I'm going to solve them using substitution as opposed to elimination. The top equation, I can rewrite real quickly by dividing both sides by negative 1. The top equation I can rewrite as y equals minus 31, which is a beautiful thing.
because now I can substitute that into the bottom equation using substitution. So I'm using substitution as opposed to elimination just out of the blue here because two of the letters drop out. When two of the letters drop out, elimination isn't the best way to do your next step. Substitution is the better way to do your next step. So I took this equation, solved it for y, and now I'm going to substitute it into the bottom equation and go negative 1 times negative 31 plus 3z equals to 31. This is going to give me 31 plus 3z equals to 31. I'm going to minus 31 from both sides. The letters aren't dropping out. This gives me 3z equals to 0. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. The letters haven't dropped out, so I don't get infinitely many solutions. I don't get 0 or no solutions. This part right here is going to give me z equals to 0 because on the left side the 3's cancel, I'm left with a z. On the right side I have a fraction with a 0 in the numerator and those are always equal to 0. Now I'm going to solve and get down to my last step. I have an answer for y, I have an answer for z. I need to solve for x, and I need to pick any equation that has an x. I'll pick this one. I'm going to pick x plus y plus 5z equal to 39. And for y, I'm going to plug negative 31. And for z, I'm going to plug 0. I'm going to get x plus negative 31 plus 5 times 0 equal to 39. And that's going to give me x minus 31 plus 0 equals to 39. That's going to give me x minus 31 equal to 39. And then I'm going to add 31 to both sides. And that's going to give me x equal to 70. I believe my answer is going to be x equal to 70 y equal to minus 31, z equal to 0, which I would write as 70 minus 31 and 0. I think that works. I'm going to check it off screen real quickly. And um, in the next section, I will show you the slick way that I'm doing off screen to check my answers. I just didn't want to do it in this section. I want to, but I didn't want to because I thought it overcomplicated the section. Oh, and that's actually right. So your problem 51, kind of glad I did it because it had a trick in it that we hadn't been exposed to. That's the end of this section. So um, hopefully you feel okay about having three equations and three unknowns and knowing what to do. I will always give you this first step on the test and it's just a matter of you knowing how to follow that up to finish. Alright, so I'm going to pause the video and end this thing.